The EpiPen for Schools program um, is a program that, uh, in which Mylan donates EpiPens to schools in areas where the law allows that. Um, at this point, there are over 60,000 schools that have participated in this program, and it provides a safety net um, for people who anaphylax at school or who have severe allergic reactions. And as part of that program, uh, the company has sent out questionnaires to whoever is most qualified at the school to fill out the questionnaires regarding who's having ep uh, episodes of anaphylaxis, what causes it, who's trained to treat, you know, how does it get treated. The study that I'm reporting on at this meeting has to do with that data. This was the first year that we collected the data, so it's on about 40,000 um, schools. And what we have found is that depending on whether you look at the large school districts or the small school districts, anywhere from 22 to 37 percent of people who have anaphylaxis um, in the school setting have no prior history of an allergy, uh, or at least no known allergy. Um, interestingly, they're not all students. About 11 percent are visitors or faculty members. Um, and so there's a large number of people who would not ordinarily have an epinephrine and auto injector in the school setting. And so um, as a physician, you know, I find this a very important um, program. It provides a good safety net. Um, the other thing that we looked at is how are they treated? And 25% are not treated with epinephrine. Most of those receive um, antihistamines. Um, on the other hand, kudos to <laughs> To the school nurses, 75 percent are treated um, appropriately with epinephrine. Most of them are transported to hospital, 80 percent, um, but there's still 20 percent that, that don't get transported to the hospital. I think from an educational standpoint, we have a huge opportunity. You know, looking at these school systems, about a third treat, uh, teach everybody to recognize anaphylaxis, a third teach only a few individuals, and a third select individuals. Um, and so I think we have an opportunity as physicians to encourage our school setting, our, our schools to teach more people to recognize, especially considering that 20 to 35 percent of people who have anaphylaxis won't have a prior history. So they're not going to come in and say, Susie Q just had a peanut and now she's got facial swelling and hives and can't breathe. Um, it's going to be somebody with symptoms of anaphylaxis with no good history and so um, that's a big opportunity for us for teaching. I suppose there are lots of things that need to be taught to uh, gone over at the beginning of the school year. Interestingly some of the unions have been resistant to um, being given the responsibility of administering uh, epinephrine. Now that's a different question from who's who's allowed to learn, but I think that, that um, some of the unions are worried about medical legal um, responsibility. You've been taught to recognize anaphylaxis, you didn't recognize it, um, that sort of thing. But you know, if we're all interested in the children, it should really be about the children um, and not about um, who's going to point the finger at me if I, if I miss that diagnosis. Goodness, we teach our next door neighbor's kids how to recognize when our kids are having allergic reaction if we have a child with, you know, with a food allergy. So uh, certainly a teacher or a bus driver um, could learn. It's all ages. And so um, the schools represented had anywhere from um, kindergarten through high school and, and uh, about 50 percent of the episodes of anaphylaxis actually happened in high school. Now, as we know that's a high risk taking group of, of individuals um, where we have far less control over what they put in their mouths you know, and what they do, um, but it represented kindergarten as well. High school students, for the most part, are carrying their own EpiPens or AbbVie's, whatever have, they've been prescribed. Um, but I, even in that situation, encourage my parents to leave one at the nurse. We are talking about high school students. Um, they don't always have everything with them that they're supposed to. Um, but certainly in the lower grades, you do need that EpiPen or, or AbbVie's. And interestingly, 49% um, of the epinephrine that was administered came out of the stock 
epinephrine supply, so it came from the EpiPen for Schools program. We're not sure whether it was simply easier to put your hands on that stock epi um, rather than find the individual child's um, product. Uh, I, I have a hard time believing 49% of the time they didn't have anything, but you know, who knows. About 67% uh, were food allergy, and that would be expected. Um, the next most common was insect stings, less so in the wintertime, of course. Um, and then there was a mishmash of other, uh, which included medications or, you know, what have you. Food allergies are certainly on the rise, and peanut allergy in particular has gotten a lot of, of attention from the popular press, so everybody knows you know about nut allergies but you know the other thing unfortunately is there have been some very high profile deaths in the school setting um, and sometimes it unfortunately it takes a tragedy to push legislation um, but we now have almost all of the states have passed legislation allowing or requiring schools to stock their own epinephrine um, parents are getting uh, much more vocal about uh, wanting their children in a safe environment and so you're right the um, the awareness in the school setting has gone way up so having access to injectable epinephrine um, would certainly go a long way towards providing a safety net however you also need to teach people how to recognize anaphylaxis and, and how to actually use the devices. I mean, they're, they're fairly simple to use. Um, the, the bigger question is, can you recognize that somebody's having an allergic reaction? Uh, there was a, a big campaign years ago um, on television, if I recall, uh, showing somebody having symptoms of, of a heart attack. Um, and so the the public became a little bit more aware. I think we, we would do well to do something like that for allergic reactions. And at least on a school level, um, the hope is that the schools will train more people to recognize anaphylaxis. Because if you have epinephrine, but you don't know that you need to use it, you know, what good is it? So that, that piece of education is really critical. have a lot of questions that came from the first set of data um, and so what we're hoping to do is understand a little bit better um, as the the program unfolds year to year um, who's being trained to to use epinephrine who's being trained to um, to recognize anaphylaxis and we're hoping that we can encourage schools to expand on that it would be my hope that um, that recognition of the disease and uh, availability of epinephrine may become a little bit more uh, widespread. And there are some states that are actually starting to pass legislation uh, regarding that for just public uh, areas. Disney is partnering um, with Mylan and you can fi now find EpiPens uh, at Disney.